away from the cabinet. Thank you. if you do not comply. This concludes our test. Thank you. That's the percent today. It's the saddest pie chart I've ever seen. I feel bad for your graphics department that they, that they were asked to make that. But to this question of, you know, Brett Kavanaugh saying that he wants fairness, he was explicitly asked whether or not he thought an FBI investigation was the right way to go. And he responded yet again with what I want is fairness, really trying to stay away from specifics. And to your point about the optics, you have Senator Corker saying, well, if I were on the Judiciary Committee, I wouldn't want to ask questions because someone's going to say something that you guys, meaning you, cable news, are going to run 24-7. So there is some awareness on their part that they could step in it. At the same time, they have the President of the United States, the leader of their party, degrading a woman who has come forward with these allegations. So I'm not sure that they are going to save themselves simply by having a woman ask these questions. I think the bigger question, you know, besides the Republican Party's optics on this one and what they might say, is what are these hearings actually going to achieve? Because my the growing sense is that both sides, frankly, are going into Thursday with their minds made up. Um, is there anything that she could say or that he could say barring something extraordinary that would actually change any minds in which case why are we doing this and what we need to be doing as everybody is saying and as even Lisa Mikowski has now come around to saying is having a proper investigation that is the only way in this very partisan environment with these midterms coming up that we have any chance of getting to the truth and even then it's going to be difficult but at least give the professional investigators a shot I mean, if there is going to be an investigation, it's going to be because of Lisa Murkowski and, and Susan Collins. And I think <clears throat> as partisan and as polarized as this is, there are still persuadable votes, right? There are red state Democrats who are sort of standing there with their finger in the wind trying to figure out which way it's blowing. Um, everybody is looking for signals. And it fascinated me that after a week or so of saying no FBI, no FBI, the FBI doesn't do that, today the National Review's Jonah Goldberg ran a story saying maybe we should look at the FBI. And I take that to mean that they cannot count on Lisa Murkowski and they cannot count mm -hmm. on Susan Collins. And that as we get closer to the hearing and uh, Dr. Ford has called their bluff and is showing up and is negotiating terms and all along maybe they were hoping she wouldn't show up, they now realize that this is not going anywhere good for them. Well, I think uh, you make such a good point because that's why this is uh, not theater, although I think uh, Caddy's Washington season skepticism is very apt, which is to say this hearing could be a joke and a farce based on the trickery, but it could also be the thing 
potentially that changes everything if some of these swing senators on the Republican side see and their constituents see enough evidence, right? This is not the criminal yeah. standards we've emphasized on this show. Nobody is, is up for going to jail here. Just enough evidence to say this promotion should be in doubt. And, and to that effort, I want to show Susan Collins here now. I want to be very clear as we try to be precise for viewers about what we're seeing. This is Susan Collins before the second accuser came forward. So this is uh, her view of things when it was uh, only Dr. Ford, uh, courtesy of an interview done through Showtime. Take a look. Senator McConnell seems to be suggesting he has the votes. So if he has the votes, he must have your votes. I, still, are you still undecided? I am. How could I decide before hearing the testimony of Professor Ford? So is Christine Ford the only thing that leaves you undecided on him? I'm close. I'm very close. But I'm not all the way there yet. And Professor Ford deserves to be heard. That is her hanging it on Professor Ford. Yes. You're making a face. I can't, qu well, I can't quite tell what face you're making. <laughs> well, I think that she's, she is repeating what the Republicans have said all along. Professor F Ford deserves to be heard. But when she says, I'm close, I'm very close, but I'm not quite there yet. What more could Professor Ford say in that hearing that would mm. change her mind? That's my question. Professor Ford has laid out her story. We know the parameters of what she's going to say. Um, I guess the only thing that could happen would be that she would be very plausible and Brett Kavanaugh would come across as implausible or say something that was detrimental to his case. Well, uh, since you pose it... Again, I find that hard to believe since, because he's so prepped on this. Since you pose it in the form of a question, which is sort of supposed to be my thing, but we can, <laughs> we can all do it. You can't invite three journalists and then exact <laughs> answers. I will hazard an answer for the Go. sake of argument, uh, as the lawyers would say when they're being annoying arguendo, uh, which is to say I don't necessarily believe this. But one answer to you would be uh, that if the process works, putting her under oath before a government committee under the penalty of perjury and the criminal sanction that comes with that, I mean, ask Rick Gates or George Papadopoulos uh, what happened when you lie and you get caught before the government, that, that that is a higher standard than her speaking to the Washington Post. And so if she does that, that alone it makes it more probative, again, I'm sounding like a super lawyer, than simply speaking in public. Yeah, and I guess the same applies to him too, right? Mm -hmm. That he will have to answer very specific questions um, and speaking to that body, mm -hmm. even the counselor, is going to be different from speaking to Fox News. What I find more interesting than Colin Sound is Corker saying that there are more of us than you think there are. You keep saying there are a handful of Republicans who want to hear the testimony right. and what he called the rebuttal. But there are more of us and we're a silent majority. That, I think, is something. So you talk about a silent majority. You think about the majority of voters being women. You think about how the Senate still is not representative of the gender diversity of the nation. Uh, here's some of the pressure I want to show that we dug up locally on Senator Collins on the issue. Senator Collins says she has yet to make her decision on Judge Kavanaugh. Delay the hearings until the information comes out more. Their goal is to get Senator Susan Collins to listen to them. I was concerned with him before this all came about with Roe v. Wade. They also delivered letters with signatures from sex assault victims. I really want her to know that women are counting on her. No new statement from Senator Collins, who has been the target of dozens of protests and and a $1.5 million fund for her future opponent, should she help confirm Kavanaugh. Where does that pressure fit in? I mean, I think it means that she has to at least acknowledge this testimony, sit there and consider it, and have a very good, good rationale coming out of that testimony for why her opinion has either stayed the same or has changed. Yeah. Uh, look, we learn a lot from each of you, and I, I suspect as this story continues, uh, we'll be hearing more from each of you. So thanks to Irin Carmon, you know I struggle with your name, but I've known you many years. It's okay, I won't hold it against you. Irin. This isn't a criminal trial. <laughs> <laughs> Fairly put. Uh, Caddy K, uh, an easier name, among others. For some people. Among other things, also in alliteration. And Elisa Menendez, I have nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it could be the hardest. So bravo. <laughs> Thanks to each of you. Coming up, why Senate Republicans are refusing to reveal the identity of this now mystery questioner. I'm going to speak about this live with a senator who will do some of his own questioning. That's Democratic Senator Sheldon Whitehouse on the Democratic side. And Kavanaugh's Bill Clinton problem, why there are critics now talking about hypocrisy as they look at his very aggressive work and advocacy for personal sexual questioning of President Clinton in the Ken Starr probe. And later, the White House now says what should happen in the Russia inquiry after Rod Rosenstein leaves. If he leaves, I'm Ari Melbourne. You're watching The Beat on MSNBC.